I mean, look, I I know people who studied with me who who had like backlogs in their undergrad, and they've come here and now they're working for really good companies, Netflix. In one case, even uh, Microsoft. I did my bachelor's at a university called Shastra in Tamil Nadu, and uh, my field was bioinformatics. So we have. Eight semesters of college, right, in India, and uh, in the eighth semester in engineering courses, you tend to have a project. So my final project was something to do with machine learning, and so I got really interested in that. Uh, I worked for a year, and I wanted to study more in that line. So I actually applied for a computer science degree for my masters. One complication that might arise for people who want to do that is that a lot of uh, master's degree courses require you to have completed certain prerequisite coursework before you will be eligible to apply for that. And uh, the place where I went to, University of Florida, they had six of those courses, uh, uh, seven of those courses out of which you had to have done at least six. And I had done five, but they still let me uh, get an admit. So sometimes that works out that way, uh, but not all the time. So it, it depends on how you're presenting your uh, statement of purpose and, and how you're linking what you've already done to what you want to do. I figured out my plans pretty much at the last minute. I was supposed to have applied in 2015, right? The, the deadline for the university I got into, which was University of Florida, was February 1st, 2016. And I sent in my application on February 1st. I started writing my SOP like a day before that. And uh, yeah, so don't do this. Also, I sent my letters of recommendation late. So I actually ended up getting my admit for spring 2017, not fall 2016. So I spent one semester studying at a different university called NGIT. Then I transferred nine credits from this university to that because I, I got the admit late and I didn't want to uh, not study during that semester. So kind of a complicated journey, but uh, don't, don't repeat what I did. So Florida was cheaper and NGIT was a bit more expensive, but mostly that depends on the state that you're going to. Because some states tend to have higher cost of living and they tend to correlate with higher uh, tuition fees as well. Like for example, California, uh, universities of California will generally be $70,000, uh, somewhere in that range. So those tend to be very expensive. NYU tends to be expensive. Uh, so it depends on where you go. My GPA was actually in the six pointers. So I had to have things to make it up. But again, it, it depended on how I how I presented my case, right? Because I did bioinformatics, which had a lot of uh, programming related courses, as well as a lot of core biology. And my grades tended to be better with, with the programming stuff than the biology side of things, right? So I didn't do well in molecular biology or biochemistry, uh, but I did pretty well in, in like Java and Python. So. I got my letters of recommendation from the kind of professors who who I did well with, whose courses I, I got really good grades in. And I made my case saying, these are the things that I'm interested in. This is what I'm going to do in your program. And these are things where I have performed well at academically. So that's why I think I'm a good student. I was able to fund it because I had, uh, like we sold some shares that we owned and I didn't take a student loan. But uh, most people who studied with me did take student loans. And I came here in 2016. People I would have come with mostly would have graduated by 2018. And many of them have paid off their student loans completely by now. So University of Florida was not particularly unaffordable. And uh, at least in my program, I, I did a computer science uh, degree. The most common employer that so many of my peers were hired at was Amazon. And Amazon might, might have a hard work culture, but they pay really well. We had what were, what were called uh, career fairs, right? So it happens every semester. You go, you talk to a lot of companies, uh, even Facebook and all came. So it's basically every big company you can think of. It's just that many of them would tell you that uh, they can't hire you because they wouldn't want to sponsor you. So you would have to find the right companies 
and seek them out so a company like bloomberg is particularly concerned about gpa most other companies are not uh in fact other than bloomberg i haven't had anyone ask for my gpa at all since i came here uh so i mean i'm talking about masters gpa is right so that may not matter quite as much as as what you put on your resume and what your skill sets are like uh but you shouldn't depend on the career fair you should still apply for companies on your own uh do your own job search you would have to apply to a lot of companies like a thousand companies and maybe 20 or 30 of them will reach back to you and uh, some will translate into interviews and you're still going to mess up some interviews and eventually you will get something so but it's a it's a it's a question of perseverance it can be anywhere from 60 70 000 on the lower end to i mean i know people who got like 210000 and even higher than that uh, so i'm i'm talking about like base salary right so after that there's the bonuses and everything combined so you you can probably expect somewhere in the 200s probably less than 300 it is no one size fit all answer for this some people come in and uh, so it's a two year program generally right so you try to find an internship for your first summer break and then you try to find a more permanent job so some people end up getting an internship at a really good company within their first semester and then that company ends up hiring them and it turns out to be easier for a lot of others they're still looking for jobs once they once they're done with their degree and they have what roughly 5 months because there's 2 months of a grace period and then 3 months you're allowed to be unemployed on OPT if you cannot find anything by the end of 5 months then you either have to go back to india or uh, one option that some people here might consider would be these uh, sort of consultancy type companies which tend to hire a lot of people and then try to link them up with other projects I don't have a lot of knowledge of how that works but it's it's something that I know that people do consider. Uh but most people will end up finding a job by the end of those 5 months. The vast majority will find them once they graduate. It's only going to be a few people who will get it even before they graduate. It depends on the job market as well, right? Like in uh when my brother graduated it was uh, May 2020. So that was that was when the pandemic had hit and i think the unemployment rate had gone up to like 9% so it was a difficult time at at that point but like now unemployment rate is at 4% uh everyone is hiring wages have actually gone up significantly in 2021 so i mean it's a good time to be graduating now but if you're considering doing a degree now you should think about when you're graduating in probably 2 3 years from now what the job market might be like then I'll give you a quote from former president George W Bush. He said this at a commencement. He said uh, to all of you who are graduating with honors, uh, I say well done. And to you C students, I say you too can be president of the United States. If you are a C student, you should still apply and I guess it depends on what your application budget is and how many universities you're applying to. But uh, you should definitely try to have a few universities that you don't think you can get into, but are still pretty good. Because sometimes you might just luck out. Like I was, I was turned down by universities that were fairly low in the rankings compared to Florida, and I still got into Florida, right? Which was top forty. It it really depends. I mean, the rankings aren't perfectly uh, predictive of where you will get into and where you won't. So do more research look at profiles of people who got in the previous year What you can do to make up for a low GPA it comes down to how well you present your uh statement of purpose what kind of recommendations you're getting and really make sure you do well on your GRE try to see if if your GPA has improved over time the, the graph also matters and if it has highlight that or if your gpa uh is like like in my case if it's good in some courses not so good in others and the kind of courses that you've done well in that's what you're going to do for your masters maybe highlight that point try to get rec- recommendations from professors you've done well with so things like that really help you can get into a school that's outside the top 100 in your field and still get like the biggest employer to hire you uh but there is some correlation like the be- better the name brand of the school 
the more likely you are to get an interview once you get the interview it really depends on your ability to get through the interview but getting the interview it it does matter so if you can go to a better school definitely go to a better school uh but don't assume that if you haven't gone to the most high rank school that you don't have opportunities in life you can still graduate with a very good job with with really high incomes and once you get your first job and probably once you're through the first couple of years of your career where you went to school won't make that much of a difference 